Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. First of all, let me give honor to God, who really is the head of my life, and allows me to uh, make some decisions that I think God for the spirit of discernment. There are times like this, you feel so helpless or you feel so overtaken by anger where you can see very easy how gang activity continues to pep perpetuate itself in our communities. Because the one thing that happens when you take a loved one or take somebody's family member away from them is who gave you the right and it leaves a revengeful taste in your mouth. The same revengeful taste that you had when we saw the uh, so-called World Trade Center being attacked by foreigners and it was how dare you try to hurt us and we will retaliate. And it's a human and it's a normal response. But it's not a response that... Um, in this circumstance, we'll do any, any, any good. Okay? Same thing with my sister and the same thing with my brother. I'm now the victim in this community, my community, of having three family members murdered. Um, it is one of the hardest things that I'm, I'm having to come to grips with because this should not be happening. I want to thank each and every one of y'all who gave me your condolences, who looked out for me and, and said a prayer for my family. We want to sincerely thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Um, I meant to talk on you the other day, but I was so overtaken with emotion, and I didn't know that the record uh, button was hit. And by the time I noticed it, I um, I just gave you I just gave you what was raw, and what we were feeling over here. So I just want to thank y'all for chiming in. Uh, it's still so painful. It's so painful. The fact that my brother wouldn't hurt a fly. And if anybody knew him, they would tell you that. Uh, he was the election inspector. I mean, thugs don't want to do the elections, okay? Uh, but he had a real bad habit of uh, meeting people, being not as um, reserved or restricted as maybe I would be or somebody else. Um, because of some of the, um, I think, emotional issues that he might have been, you know, that he dealt with. He was a little bit too trusting of everybody. Um, and although I don't know, I did talk with the detective and I did talk with uh, the coroner. Um. Uh, I realized that there's going to be a lot more puzzle pieces uh, to put together before I can actually give y'all uh, the actual cause, the actual situation. Although I'm, I, I'm pretty sure of what what has happened. You know, my brother was one of the sweetest people you, you you could ever meet, and he didn't deserve this. And I keep saying I know a lot of people say that, but he did. He didn't hurt anybody. He wasn't uh he wasn't that type of guy. He just wasn't. He was very docile and um unfortunately too trusting. And the things that he trusted people about and the things that he did in poor judgment um may have been what cost him his life. So it's very difficult uh, because I know him. 
But I promise him, with every bit of blood in my body that's left, I'm going to fight to have his to have his death avenged. And the people that are responsible for killing my brother, you will be brought to justice. Milwaukee has a very high rate of solvent murders. And I know that from talking to the detective on yesterday, I feel very confident that it won't be long before they wrap this case up. And this is one thing I want to say to my people. We always talking about the side of the law when the police are doing something. You know, fuck the police and all this stuff. And yeah, I get it. I get all that when they're doing egregious things. But there's times when you really do need the police. And I know because I've needed them three times and they've come through to bring us information about who killed our loved ones through their investigation and hard work. Yeah, that's their job. But they could have as did their job. And if they could not care the way we say they could care, none of these murders could be absolved and resolved. But I know that there's good cops out there. And I, you know, I got to say this because it's important. And without the detectives right now, my family would be in total, total, total terror. Turmoil. Because ain't nobody out here told us what happened. The streets ain't talked about nothing. Maybe the streets don't know yet. But all the information that we're getting right now. And some of it that I'm not supposed to say and be privy of. But I'm, I'm saying it because I know people in law enforcement. And they've told me things that won't be made public. And so I don't want to say anything to jeopardize the case at all. But there are times where we need police. And once we get our communities together, they will respect us the way they should. Because we're going to demand that they respect us the way they should. But nobody can't respect you when you don't respect yourself. Because can't nobody ride your back unless your back is bent. Unless your back is bent. That's how you get rolled. I'm still hurt. I'm still hurt so bad. But I'm going to tell you something. My brother's death will be avenged. It will. Justice will come for Rick. Rick, he didn't deserve this. And I'm going to tell you something. You will be brought to justice. You will be brought. You will pay for what you did to him. You will pay. Thank y'all family. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, your kind words. I don't wish this on nobody. Nobody got the right to take your family member's life. Nobody has the right to take a life period that they didn't give. They step in extenuating circumstances. And this was not one of them. Trust you me. With that being said, y'all, I love you. Thank you for all your kind words. I appreciate it. Keep praying for us over here. And life goes on. My brother has made his transition. And he has sister and brother to welcome him over. To cross him on over. And I hope he's looking out for me. Where he's at. Because we sure need it right now. You know what, I'm going to tell y'all something real weird. My mother, who y'all know is in the last stages of her dementia. He 
yesterday, all she did was talk about my brother and how sweet of a spirit that he was. And he is. And she doesn't know because nobody has told her anything. And we've gone out of her way. Whether she retains it or not, I don't know. So we just made the decision not to even mention any of this around her. Some of y'all might think that's not cool or whatever, but it don't really matter what y'all think. This is what my family decided. And yesterday, he must have visited her. He must have let her know that he was okay. Because all she did yesterday was talk about how good of a son he was. How <gasps> he would bring her flowers to church and all types of stuff and he never missed a moment to tell her how much he loved her. He comes to visit her every every week. Take her out. And he was a good son. He was a good son. But loved his mother. And I thank God that he came to visit her. To let her know. Spiritually. That he needed to make contact with her. And he gave her a sense of peace. And I just wanted to share that with y'all. Because it's really weird how she just began talking about him and how good he was. And we were looking at one another like, nobody told her, what is she? So I know it was spiritual. There's two worlds. There's the one you can see and the one you can't. And you better believe what I'm saying to you because it's the truth. So is it above. So is it below. Like what you hear, please share the video, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.